Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa to the first conversation for today. Creative problem solving is a way of solving problems or identifying opportunities when conventional thinking has failed. It encourages you to find fresh perspectives and come up with innovative solutions so that you can formulate a plan to overcome obstacles and reach your goals. As we explore what it is, the CEO of HelpMom, a youth advisor for World Bank on Solution for Youth Employment, Dr. Abiodun Aderini, joins us now to look at its key principles and provide a model that can be used to generate creative solutions vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, SDGs and other developmental issues. Uh, many thanks for joining us, Dr. Aderini. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. It is indeed our pleasure. Okay. But let's get straight into it. Creativity and innovation in problem solving. It just sounds like some concept that is being studied in school. Can you break it down for us? Yes, yeah, so um, we are celebrating the Creativity and Innovation Day today, which actually is um, meant to um, show how creativity and innovation can help achieve the sustainable developmental goal um, towards 2030. And the importance of that is that um, the UN, UN has seen that when they set the goal, the Millennium Developmental Goal between 1990 and 2015, and it wasn't achieved, they've seen the reason why innovation and creativity can help speed up the achievement of the Sustainable Developmental Goal towards 2030. So if you look at education, if you look at healthcare sector, the best, the bedrock, innovation is the bedrock for continuity in any business. And for us to achieve that, we must be able to keep innovating, we must be able to solve problems in new creative ways to be able to achieve the sustainable development goals. So, so, so let's even, you know, delve to this sort of part, which I think that you probably might be an authority or have um, some sort of um, experience. The health sector for us in Nigeria, you see how the health sector is. And uh, a lot of people have argued that if you look at our budget allocation, budgetary allocation over time, it hasn't even met, you know, the required standard. So we constantly struggling and grappling between 7% compared to the Abuja Declaration when we talked about, you know, 15% and what have you. So how, how do we now manage this now? We're talking about meeting developmental goals. How do we now get innovative when we have less allocated, you know, to the budget sector? Yeah, if you look at in the 20, health sector, I beg your pardon. Yeah, if you look at in 20, um, 2001, um, Chief Oliver Shagun, the former president of Nigeria at an, um, in, uh, at an event with the WHO, declared that before 2020, 2007, 21% will be allocated to health. And at the moment, we still have 7% allocated to health. And um, we cannot say we want to keep waiting for the government to solve the problem we have in Nigeria. The private sector leaders and local leaders need to partner together to facilitate good health care solutions and good health care problems. One of the things I've come to realize is that in countries that have made um, progress in terms of improving their healthcare sector, there has been a form of partnership between the private leaders and the grassroots leaders. So what I mean grassroots leaders, people that are solving you know, um, local solutions, using local innovation to solve local healthcare challenges in communities. When we have private leaders, when I mean by private leaders, I mean the banks, the corporations coming together, putting their CSRs to support these people. Because if we have to wait for the government, the government is not ready to do anything. And that's the truth. I mean, we don't see anything changing between now and 20. 24. We don't see anything changing between now and 2029. If we say we want to keep waiting, our budget is still going to be at 7% for healthcare. So the best way we can speed up innovation, the best way we can solve the healthcare challenges we have currently in Africa and in Nigeria is to see more local leaders, more private leaders working together to to solve um, problems and to solve. Um, um, just solving. before, I mean, yeah. Justin, uh, you know, comes in. Now, if you talk about that, which is very brilliant, I mean, it's very correct that you have, if you look at developed climbs, you have that the private sector has always driven these climbs. But we're still grappling with fundamental issues. We're talking about the issue of power. We're still talking about the issue of security. I mean, there are hospitals, I would take, for, for instance, um, the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital, where you constantly have, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking because for uh, first-hand information and, you know, being around that vicinity for a while. And so you have people constantly, uh, issue of security where doctors have been kidnapped and people are just, people are kidnapped from the hospital. So these are, we're still struggling with basic things 
access to good roads. I mean, when you want to even talk about the theaters of government, you look at the primary health care um, you know, sector. There's really almost nothing to write them about. So how do we even really achieve this in the midst of the fact that we're not even being able to meet with the basic things, uh, fundamental issues? Uh, so how can the private sector thrive in a system where there's no security and you want to talk about taxation and all the issues? How? Yeah, so I think, first of all, the government itself needs to make Nigeria business friendly for innovators. That's the first problem that needs to be solved, first of all. And when you talk about taxation, when I, when I mean business friendly, I mean an issue of tax, right? You don't expect the government charging a young innovator the same kind of tax you'll be charging banks, right? I mean, that will help us strive. The second thing you talked about in terms of security, say, we, if we say because security is bad, things are bad, we don't want to do anything, we'll, give, we'll get stopped. We'll get stopped. And that's where the... Um, it's not because we say that security is bad. It is just logical that if you don't have a safe environment, investors will pull out. We know how many investors, foreign investors, that have pulled out of the country following all of the security concern and also local investors. who Businesses have collapsed. And so the question is how do we now even get into this point and become creative in, in the midst of not being able to meet with basic issues, including you know the power issue, which is very critical to the health sector. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that these problems are fundamental, systemic, right? We can't, these are things that I don't have control over. These are things that innovators don't have control over. These are things within the government power sector. These are things that can be solved by them. So what I'm trying to say is that we don't have to, we, we can't wait for them to solve this problem before we start working. And what I mean where innovators can work with private leaders is that in communities where private leaders are working, like me now, I'm working in Ibadan, I'm working within the Southwestern community. We can have private leaders supporting us. There are a lot of innovators working in the grassroots community in Shokoto. They can have private leaders support them. There are a lot of grassroots community, um, grassroots leaders working in Kaduna, Kano, all these places that even have cases of Boko Haram. We can have local and um, private sectors support them in the best possible way until we have our security issues resolved, right? So the best way to go around this, so you, you talked about some places where doctors are kidnapped. We've seen in the US where telemedicine is a big thing, right? And where trust is actually something that is being inbuilt in the system. You know, one of the reasons why people don't trust some online consultation, some telemedicine consultation is that they believe that I can decide to stay beside the system and I can say I'm a doctor because there's no central data that can verify whether I'm a doctor. This is the, these are the things that civilized communities, these are the things that the U.S. have in place. So I think if the healthcare system can put some of these things in place where there can be good data and verification, mm -hmm. things like telemedicine will strive, things like that. So you don't really need to go meet a doctor unless face it's the case face. of surgery mm. which you need and the likes to oh, actually emergency. yes and doctors can be feel, feel feel more safe with their lives because they can attack to patients remotely okay so we don't lose the essence of, of this uh, particular day which actually uh, talks about um, using innovation and creativity to, to solve our most important problems you know uh, when you said in your opening salvo um, how the nations of the world have moved from the MDGs and as the Millennium Development Goals to the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, you talked about uh, maternal mortality and uh, which uh, one of the goals there is to like um, ensure um, it is reduced to seven deaths to 10,000 um, births. You know, so let's talk about the creativity and innovation specifically in that particular goal. What has been done uh, in recent times that creatively or innovatively to ensure that this particular issue of uh, maternal mortality is actually brought to the barest minimum. Yes, yeah, so um, one of the things that can really reduce maternal mortality is access to healthcare financing, right? Um, if you notice, Nigeria currently we lose 145 pregnant women daily, and our we have 814 death per 100,000 life birth, right? One of the issues that is facing us at the moment is because of the healthcare system we have, and there's no proper healthcare financing. And Nigeria has not been able to really do so much in this. One of the things I've come to realize is that the local innovators are really working hand to hand to make sure that we reduce maternal mortality to the barest minimum. One of the problems we have is we don't have good healthcare infrastructure. We don't have good 
places where people can have safe bed. Most of the deliveries still happen at home. Because I was going to say that uh, people still patronize uh, TBAs yes, and all of yes. that. So how far have we gone in that regard? In that regard, there's no provision the government is making. So let me talk about what we're doing at Help Mom. What we do at Help Mom is that because we know people go to TBAs, community health workers, we provide them with the tools they need to have safe bed. So you don't need to go to, a, to, go, to, go to an hospital for you to have a safe bed. You can use our clean bed kit to have safe bed in your community. That's one of the things we do. And one of the things we're also doing now is that we are investing massively in research because we've noticed that the best way to solve issues and solve systemic problems is to invest in research. So we are not trying to do things in the conventional way that has been done. We are trying to use data to now provide solutions that can help solve this problem permanently, not just temporary. So one of the things I will employ the government to do is the government need to invest more in research. Because when you invest more in research, we'll be, we'll, there will be new innovations springing up that can help solve some of the systemic issues we have in terms of maternal mortality and infant mortality in Nigeria. So, but let's talk about, you know, poverty as uh, also part of the sustainable development goals. And if you look at it, in 2018, Nigeria had surpassed countries like India topping the charts. And, you know, currently we're looking at 70 million people. And with all of the data, those were living at, you know, $2. Uh, probably looking at 800 naira. I don't know if that's anything to go by with the current, you know, um, exchange rate. But what innovation do we need to? We have seen politicians make very lofty and promising statements. 100 million Nigerians would be lifted out of poverty. 200 million Nigeria would be a very prosperous nation. But in all of this, we constantly see the, the, the standard of the living of the people. And we see that including, um, you know, in the standard of living, if you also look at the um, rate of resources being exchanged, you find out that there's no fairness. And so there's always equality. It feels like the system is created to make some group of persons stay constantly poor. What creativity, and do you think, first of all, do you think we have been creative enough? And secondly, uh, what kind of innovation, how can we step in, uh, you know, at the government level as individuals to ensure that we get out of poverty? I think for the issue of poverty, I don't think we need any creativity or innovation in that regard. We just need to solve the problem by investing in women and investing in people. Say again, please. Investing in women, women right? And investing in small, medium businesses. Women, you say? Women, yeah, women businesses and investing in small, medium businesses also. Why specifically women in business? Because it has been proven that women manage money than men. Women grow businesses more than men. So if you look at it, even globally, in terms of raising funds, women are the low bottom of the pyramid. I mean, you have less than 1% of women who have raised over $1 million, while we have several men own businesses that have raised a lot. So I think we need to, the government itself, need to start investing in small, medium businesses. You know, when you invest in small, medium businesses, you create more employment for people. When you invest in women businesses, and when I mean women business, I'm not talking about even, that's what I'm saying, that creativity and innovation is not needed. When I'm talking about women business in terms of farming, Right, women businesses in, in terms of trading, women businesses in terms of um, fashion. Right, these are things that has been neglected by the government. And when there are more investment going into this, they can employ more people. And when they employ more people, they will be able to create more job opportunities, and they will be able to start lifting people out of poverty. And other thing, one other thing I think we I, I need to mention also is that the government itself need to create good. Um, good way in which people can export their product out of the country. You know, we are talking about the exchange rate now. You say $2. Two dollars two dollars is... Th that's basically, um, you $2 know... $2 is five seventy naira now, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because of the fact that we don't have good exchange, uh, we don't have good exchange rate system. If we have good export system in which people can start making locally made product and they can trans export it outside, it's going to even help Nigeria in terms of its own... Um, 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 dollar to Naira exchange rate because we have more inflow of um, foreign currency coming into the country because of the export that we are providing. So I think, number one, the government needs to invest in small, medium businesses. Number two, the loan. One other thing I forgot is that there must be low interest loan provided also for businesses. And because one of the things you come to realize is that you want to get loan from the bank, they're telling you to pay 18%. I mean, and it's not even flexible. So 
loans that are really flexible and have low interest rate, and also investing in women-owned businesses and also investing in small medium let's, businesses. Let's, let's take it one step further. You've talked about um, the roles, uh, you know, SME small and medium um, scale enterprises, uh, you know, play in the driving the nation's economy. And you have also talked about um, uh, the need for a uh, low uh, interest rate for to, you know, to sustain that economy. But let's really talk about creativity and innovation now. Uh, at the entrepreneurship level. I'm a small business owner. I have um, a business and I manage uh, less than 20 people. What kind of innovation or what kind of creativity do I need to bring on to, the, uh, to my business on a daily basis so I can actually do things differently and actually get better returns? Yeah, so the best way you can be creative about your business is using technology, right? Um, technology is one of the things that can help you scale fast Technology is one of the things that can help you grow fast, right? And technology is one of the things that can be appealing also to investors to invest in your business. I'll give you an example today. So, you know, delivery, we have something, the delivery company. A lot of, you see a lot of people having delivery companies in logistics, Nigeria. Logistics. Logistics, lots of logistics and the like. Mm. It's the same logistic company that people like OP was doing. It's the same logistic company that people like Bolt is doing. Let's not be mentioning brand. Okay. Brand, brand. Like, okay. right? It's the same logistic company they are doing. Mm. Why is it that they, theirs is more um, facilitating to investors because they've been able to master how to incorporate corporate technology into what they do. So as a small business owner, you must also find a way to be creative to put technology at the core center of what you do so that you can be able, because with technology you are innovating, and when you are innovating with technology, you can scale fast, number one, and also you can be able to grow faster also with technology. So, um if, if you look at the uh, sustainable goals, I mean, it's quite encompassing. It talks about, you know, quality education, gender equality, zero hunger, affordable clean water. I mean, the list is almost endless with all of this. But you want to begin to ask yourself, some of those things cannot happen on, you know, they just can happen in space without a safe environment and security as top on that particular list. And so you want to begin to ask yourself, what's the creativity and innovation that's needed to solve the security problem? These are issues because at the end of the day, the sustainable development goals is looking at the standard of living of the people. And these are some of the, you know, um, landmarks that have been put out to measure. So you look at the quality of education and what have you. So, so, so the, prob the question for us right here is, um, what's the creativity that's required and to innovation to solve security concerns. That's on the one hand. And as much as we know that security is you know, almost the responsibility of government, uh, that's on, the one, on one side of it. So how do we even solve this? Because it feels like this um, you know, would just go a long way in sorting other issues. Then I'll bring this quickly because we might just you know, have to call it off. Now, if you look at the banking center, you've talked about innovation. Over time, there's been several innovations and technology that's been introduced. But recently, there's a lot of outburst. And you see that you know, being promoted by social media where people are acting. <laughs> you, you find people conducting praise and worship sessions outside the bank uh, because of the fact that problems are not being solved. You also have people jumping counters and acting you know, very rational. So but how do we manage all of this? I mean, it's a two-in-one question now. Yeah, so um, I think I would take from the last question to the end. If you look at one of the reasons why we have, like you said, I'll use these two scenarios that you said, people bringing um, praise, doing praise and worship outside the banks, and also people jumping counter, which I saw yesterday. The reason why we have this is that the banks are not accountable anymore. Like, people are getting their money deducted for something they don't understand. And and one of the things I've really found here so well is that the banks are not also communicating. So you charge me now. For yesterday, the woman was like, they charged her 750,000 naira for from her account. For what? Right? So I think this is not even a, pro a, a problem of um, creativity and innovation. This is a problem of accountability, right? They must be accountable to their customers. 
What if you are charging me 15 error? Why are you charging me 15 error? And I noticed one, one thing that the bank does is that they do these charges overnight when you're sleeping. So that you don't so that you don't suspect. I mean so that you just wake so that you just wake up and you just like a thief in the night. Like, yes, overnight when you're sleeping. I think accountability is what the bank must incorporate in what they're doing. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are using fintech solutions. Because it's easy for you to hold them accountable if they remove any money from you. Like who no for, like any <laughs> I know what you're that, right? but that you know that particular brand you're mentioning has also not been out you know of some of the issues i mean it was also being reported it was seen where a customer was being beaten blue black by the by, by of by course them. this certain brand so so I, I totally understand that companies you know the bank need to be very accountable but we also talk about some of these issues that should be solved with technology they have some of this technology that has been introduced you mentioned that Sometimes you don't even need to walk to these places to solve the problem. You can just sit back, you know, at your comfort zone and at a click of a button, it's been solved. So I really don't know how efficient technology has been, that creativity and innovation has been in the banking sector, especially in Nigeria. I also don't think they've been creative enough. And if they are not careful, they'll be out of business soon because of a lot of fintech and a lot of innovations coming up. Um, like I said, accountability is key. So I think one of the ways that this can be resolved is that if I'm opening a bank account with you, let me know all the charges I have to pay. Let be straight up with me. Communicate with me. Send them as text messages to me. Let me see them on my bank apps that these are the things I'm due for at this particular time of the month, and won't have these kind of problems again. And you mentioned the issues of security, really. See, when I think about security, will I use technology to, um, I mean. <laughs> no, 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 so, so it's creativity and it's innovation. Well, let's look at the, let's look at the railway sector now. I mean, when the, the I, I saw it somewhere where that um, a rail was moving and helicopter was actually escorting it. I, I think that's innovation, right? I mean, but that's a lot of money being spent, and that's been. But it can be taken down. It can be taken down. That's a lot of money being spent. So I think I support what someone said. A, 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 governor, a governor said we need to bring in machineries to fight the insecurity we have in Nigeria. And I think at this stage, that's what we need. But well, where does, before we let you go, just very quickly in 30 seconds, so where does all of this um, you know, lie in the, um, the new media and all of that? For, I, I think for new media, I think um, one of the things I've come to realize is that for the space of the new media, people are not, people are still a bit backward in, a, in some regards. So if you look at, um, I see a lot of things happening in the new media outside the country where every content is being, mon every content mm -hmm. is being monetized. So if I go on Washington Post now, or New York um, Times now, before I read any content, I must pay mm -hmm. for a month. And I still see a lot of Nigerian companies, a lot of Nigerian media companies not monetizing their content properly, right? So I think for the new media, if more monetization can come for, because now it has been shown and proven that content is king, is, 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 is king and it's going to be the next big thing. So I think the... So like, they should focus, content creators should focus, focus on, on monetizing monetization. anything they want right, to do thank now. Thank you so much. Uh, that's as much as we can take. Uh, so you better start monetizing. All no, you know, we're, we're very we're very used to being, I mean, giving, having access to free things. For yeah, instance, there's a... Yes, I think that Nigerians are not used to paying for anything. And so that's why it's difficult for you to we get a phone. You know, there's a certain phone you get that you can't even get apps very free. You have to pay for almost everything. And it's not our style. So uh, it has to take a lot for us to get to that point. But also monetizing content as low as $1 per month is a starting point also, right? Mm. You see some of these New York... Uh, some, so there are some companies, I, some uh, magazines I read online from the, from the Western world that I pay as high as $20 per month. All right, uh, uh, we've um, been speaking with um, Dr. Abiodo uh, Nure. He, uh, he is uh, the CEO, co-founder, Health Mom um, and Health. And he has been talking to us about uh, creativity and innovation vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the sustainable development goals and how you can actually add it to your daily life, to your businesses, and of course, some impact on yourself, scale your business, and of course, again, grow the economy of the nation. It's the breakfast that will take a quick break and when we come back, we'll move away from this. We'll be talking uh, politics in a moment to join us again.